Hello and welcome to Miniature Adventures. I'm Big Lee and this is update from the operations room for November 2022. So as usual I'll start with a hobby update. So back in October my role playing group uh, reconvened after a couple of months uh, break our games master a, a friend of mine who I've known since school had become a first time father at 52 the poor sod needed a few weeks to recover from some serious dad shock and focus on nappies disrupted sleep etc all the stuff that having a baby entails and as a, a lifelong friend I am of course laughing my head off because my kids are all grown up and all that shit literally is way behind me but I'm happy for him and his partner, of course. So the group took a couple of months break while he recovered uh, and got his head straight. <laughs> and we have recently restarted our ongoing Ravenloft campaign. Now, Ravenloft is probably my favourite D&D setting. Um, for any of you that don't know, it's sort of it's classic D&D, but it's got a gothic horror theme to it. Um, just a really good setting. Um, and we've been playing this campaign lots of different little mini adventures strung together in a campaign for well over two years now. Um, needless to say, our first session back after a long break was largely occupied with just catching up with each other and taking the piss out of my mate, of course. Um, uh, you know, it's our weekly, uh, sorry, our welcome bi-weekly distraction from work and historical war games, and it's always full of high adventure and a lot of laughs. Now back to war gaming. Uh, and a couple of weekends ago, I was planning on visiting Stuart's Shed of War for a 2mm French Wars of Religion game with Richard. He's written a set of rules, or he's writing a set of rules, and he wanted to do another test game. Unfortunately, Richard got COVID, and not wanting to pass it on to us, we swapped the in-person game to a remote session, live from his basement of war. Now, this meant a last-minute change of game, because his French Wars of Religion rules don't really translate well into a remote game. So instead we played a French Revolutionary Era game using a volley and bayonet. Now the, these rules worked really well for a remote game, so I'm pretty sure this won't be the last time we see this rule set. Ray and I played the French and managed to snatch a victory from the encounter, uh, so that was a good way to end the year. I wrote a blog post uh, uh, about it a couple of weeks ago um, and there's some links there to Richard's blog so I urge you to go and have a look at that because he's got some excellent photographs on there hopefully between the two articles you can get a clear idea of how the battle went and how the battle went um, and how the rules worked now that will probably be my last in-person war game of the year the weekends are filling up fast as they always do at this time of year um, I'm hoping to get some solo games in before the year expires but at the moment it's more of an aspiration than an expectation now the other big thing that's occupied my time in November has been preparation for the painting challenge now I'll come back to the workbench side of this in a minute but I also needed to make some final decisions about how the project was going to proceed and how I was going to tackle my six mil Wars of the Roses project. Now, I've previously mentioned and done a video uh, that I'd worked out how I wanted to model the bases and I'm really happy with the style that I'm going to go forward and use. Um, but I hadn't made a final decision on what base sizes and unit sizes I was going to use. Um, it doesn't really matter whether they're different as long as I'm consistent um, for the use of the rules that I want to use. So thanks to some sage advice from Ray, I've decided to start this huge period by concentrating on one battle. And true to form, I'm starting at the end uh, by using Bosworth as my focus. So during November, I've been making a list of all of the knights, lords, elves, dukes and other nobles that were present at the Battle of Bosworth. Now I've found several really good resources online, but then cross-checked every name with a series of excellent source books published by Lance and Longbow Society. I bought them at Partizan a few months ago. What I've ended up with is a, a, a sheet um, that lists all of the, the, the people involved, uh, which armies they're in, and where possible what battle they were in, what troops they brought to the fight, um, and I'm trying to compile a list of the the standards and personal heraldry available from my source books and put them on there so I know exactly where to go when I want to do that particular unit. Livery colours, that sort of thing. So I'm putting it all on this sheet. I'm nearly finished. There's still some double checking to do and there's a significant element, as we said, of speculation involved for some people. Now I'm looking... Uh, I'm working out the most accurate orders of battle as well as I can, comparing them to various published rules lists, um, just to, again to try and make sure I get the, the, the uh, an, an army list or, or an order of battle that I'm happy with. 
My aim is to have all this ready by the time the painting challenge starts so that I can get straight on and be painting units and give them the right heraldry and, and I don't have to worry about that because I've done all that work now. So now it's time for a channel update. Now I've not been as active on the channel as I would have liked. I've had, I have still have two battle report videos that are filmed um, and at the editing stage and it's just a matter of finding the time to edit them to a standard that I'm happy with. Um, you know, by the end of uh, November the channel had uh, subscribers had reached 1645 or thereabouts I think um, average viewership for each video between three and four hundred um, in their first week of publication rising a little bit more in the following weeks so I'm still pretty happy with that I'm amazed anyone wants to listen to me rambling on but I'm glad you do because I have some great conversations in the comments now overall the channel growth has been a little bit slower this month but this isn't being reflected in the increased number of people leaving comments and engaging conversations within the chat which is really encouraging actually. Now, I'm trying not to get too hung up on the YouTube analytics watching every little blip and bump in watch time or subscriber numbers. Um, I, I make videos that I want to watch and I hope that there's an audience of like-minded wargamers out there that will agree. More than anything, it's the conversations that I'm enjoying. And while viewers are contributing to the comments, I'm quite happy uh, with how the channel is doing. The only exception to those comments uh, are those ones that can best be described as spam or trolling. Uh, as you may recall, I mentioned that last month that I got trolled on my blog for the first time properly back in September, and I didn't like it. Um, I thought that was behind me, and I patted myself on the back for not feeding the troll, and then of course it happened again. The blog suddenly had a sharp rise in the number of anonymous comments on both current posts and some really old posts, which stood out as highly unusual. The comments were, let's best say, negative in tone, as well as slightly aggressive and slightly um, uh, encouraging uh, a response. Uh, they definitely read like they were trying to get a rise out of me or other readers. Now, I was cautious about replying and held off for a few days while I tried to work out whether they were in genuine comments or, 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 or trolling. Uh, when I got a succession of additional anonymous comments, each supposedly responding and affirming the previous comments in increasingly strident rhetoric designed to elicit a response from me as the site moderator. Each comment purported to be a different user, sometimes even signing off a comment with a name at the end. This just smelled like a clumsy attempt to confirm they were indeed a different person to the last one that commented in just a few seconds earlier. I didn't buy it. Uh, this had all the hallmarks of an amateur attempt to start an argument, and as previously mentioned, I don't feed trolls. So I've turned off anonymous comments on my blog. I haven't got time to waste reading and moderating this rubbish. 99.9% um, .9 of genuine comments are not anonymous, and this change won't affect them at all. Um, I have noticed though that some genuine comments are going to moder the moderation box, so I'm just trying to keep on top of that. So if your comment doesn't appear immediately, it may have been moderated for some bizarre reason due to bloggers' algorithms. I will get to it and then rest restore it as quickly as I can. Um, hopefully this will all reduce massively reduce the amount of general spam contents I get, because I get lots of ones containing links to dodgy websites and so on so i hope this won't affect genuine comments too much most comments that the filters do pick up as i say go into the moderators folder and genuine comments will get restored as soon as i can review them i guess i should count myself lucky really as i have managed to blog for nearly 14 years without really being seriously trolled until now so now we move on to my workbench update now as mentioned in my October video, I've been exploring different priming methods as for my 6mm figures. Uh, the so-called slap chop method doesn't entirely work on 6mm figures I find. Um, uh, I've tested it on and the only notable exception really was uh, horses. They're large enough that the contrast paint method seems to work really nice and that makes a nice result. But it's really hard to do that slap chop method on part of a figure. So whether I use these contrast paints on, paints on my 6 mil cavalry going forwards is doubtful. Uh, I think I'll stick to my current methods for small scale stuff because I'm comfortable with the end results. That being said, I think I will be using uh, a variation on the slap chop slash contrast paint method for some of my 28 mil fantasy figures. Just worked out really well. I did a test figure and I really liked it. Um, if there's time in the painting schedule during the painting change, I may paint up some more plastic figures from Frostgrave using this technique. But as I say, only if there's time. The priority project will be my 6mm Wars of the Roses stuff.
All of which leads to the main work on my desk in November, preparation for the 13th Analog Hobbies Painting Challenge. I did a video a few weeks ago uh, of the Wars of the Roses armies that I bought from Bacchus, uh, and during November I've been cleaning up the figures, um, washing them, cleaning off trim and flash, although to be fair there wasn't much, and, and then mounting them on lolly sticks. Um, uh, then I spent the day uh, priming everything using Armour Painters Leather Brown uh, Rattle Can uh, Spray, uh, done properly, i.e. not too thick, uh, sprayed at the right distance and the right speed, I get a really good solid base coat without clogging up the detail on 6mm figures. Now I had to do all this outside of course, much to the bemusement of my neighbour who doesn't understand why, he's, why his 50 something neighbour is playing with toys instead of doing more manly stuff like DIY or watching the footy. Now, I have to be said, I hate DIY with a passion, and I have no desire to learn what I can pay somebody else to do for me. And as for football, I hear there's a, a little tournament on at the moment, but I'm doing my best to try and avoid it on the TV. I'd rather be playing with my toys. So now I'm going to wrap up this month's update with my usual book review. So this month, I'm not reviewing a book so much as a booklet. So I picked up this copy of The Battle of Bosworth, 1485, by John Watson, um, from the Lance and Longbow Society at Partizan. And it's been a really good read, a really good starting point, if you like, for my Wars of the Roses project. And I mentioned another book a few weeks ago, but this has been really helpful because it focuses on that one battle. Um, when I started thinking about the Wars of the Roses, my mate Ray offered me very uh, good advice to focus on one battle. Um, and as I said earlier, I, I focused on Bosworth. Um, it's been a great tip, and I'm going to be painting all my armies for... Uh, Bosworth and then working out how I can use that at other, at other points. Um, this booklet has been an invaluable starting point, particularly the, the honour rolls, the list of uh, not so much the, the, the banners because I've got all those um, in other formats, but at the back there's a really good uh, honour roll of everyone who took part and that's been actually quite useful for checking um, the names of people who took part in both sides and who was killed and so on. Um, so really quite a useful little booklet. Um, I can't remember how much it was now but uh, uh, worth the money definitely. Well I hope you found that interesting. It's certainly been a, a busy month for me and more importantly I've moved forward with several projects after feeling a little bit bogged down in October. Um, it has to be said though that I'm expecting December to be very challenging. My day job shifts into high gear in the run up to the holiday season and of course the painting challenge kicks off at 6am on the 21st here in the UK. Um, I booked a little bit of time off over the Christmas period so that I can get a head start on the painting. Uh, that is if I can avoid my usual annual Christmas cold uh, which I always seem to get just as the painting challenge is about to start. Now the last thing to mention is to repeat my call for your questions, themes or ideas that you'd like me to discuss in my regular Sunday videos. I'm always on the hunt for good ideas for videos so if you have a burning question please drop me a line and I'll happily give it some consideration. So that's it for this month's update with the operations room. If you enjoyed the video please join the conversation in the comments below and of course like, subscribe and share. And if you want to keep up to date with content from this channel please tap the bell notification icon. So until next time stay safe, keep gaming and of course keep rolling high.